Want to know the best way to deal with autism meltdowns? You're going to need these tips. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan. I have Asperger's syndrome, ADHD, OCD and dyslexia and I make weekly videos on autism, mental health and tips and tricks. So if you're new around here watching for the first time, thank you so much. If you want to learn more, can you hit the subscribe button by clicking the notification bell so YouTube lets you know when I upload new videos and that's super awesome. And also if you're watching over on Facebook, make sure to give us a page, a like and a follow and you'll see daily videos from me. In this video, I'm going to be discussing five tips for helping somebody overcome an autism meltdown, an Asperger's meltdown, and I just think these are so empirical for someone to, to use on a daily basis if they are having meltdowns on a daily basis, but empirical to use if you're suffering from meltdowns. Hey guys, today's video is proudly sponsored by Making Authentic Friendships app, which is basically an app that's designed to help people with special needs and difficulties find friends based on their location and area. So, Definitely check out the app. I will leave a link in the description below where you can go check out the app. It's very, very good. And I love the fact that people always ask me like, Dan, how can I get friends? And how can I make friends? I'm on the spectrum and I find it difficult. Well, this app answers those questions. So please check them out. Making Authentic Friendships is a great app and they're lovely people. I've worked with them before on Instagram and they're really, really nice. So please check them out. And thank you so much for sponsoring this video, guys, and making this video possible. Peace. Hello and a big warm welcome to everybody here. Um, it's uh, pretty good today. The weather is awesome and I wanted to do this video because a lot of people reach out to me all the time and ask like, hey Dan, how do you deal with um, meltdowns and how do you deal with overcoming those issues that a meltdown presents? And I'm like, hey, it's a good idea. Maybe I should kind of make a video specifically on that. So guys, it is my Thursday upload video and I love speaking to you guys on a Thursday. Thank you so much for joining me today. But I have a very important question. I wanna know what you guys like more. Do you like healthy foods or do you like junk food more? Leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think. Because I think it's a really interesting question and I'd love to have that conversation with you. I read and respond to every single comment, so do that right now. Also, I'm trying to get more friends on Twitter and Instagram, so if you guys wanna follow me, I usually follow people back, so if you go give me a cheeky follow, keep up to date with everything, and I also upload videos on those platforms daily too. So. Yeah, my uh, Instagram handle and stuff will be around here somewhere. So autism meltdowns or Asperger's meltdowns. Now an Asperger's meltdown is basically something that happens when someone on the spectrum who has a condition like autism has too much overloading stimuli. So this could come from things like being overly stimulated in a shopping mall, overly stimulated in a high school, overly stimulated at a dinner table. And what I mean by overly stimulated, I mean that there's, there's a lot of sounds and noises and like, smells and, and weird things happening. There's a lot of people in the room. There's like, you know, the whole thing is just kind of like a bit of a, a, a treasure trove of uh, sensory stimuli. Now, people on the autism spectrum have issues with dealing with sensory input because autism is a communication disorder at its heart. So because of the said stimuli in those situations, the person on the autism spectrum can have the ability to become overloaded and this is what causes a meltdown. Now people might have heard of like an autism meltdown, what the, on earth does that mean? It doesn't mean that somebody physically melts like <laughs> It kind of means that their brain, the way that their mind is operating at that time has a kind of like a, a traffic jam almost, like a stall, like your movement of thought kind of gets jammed and that jam can cause so much disruption in your life. You see, when somebody has a meltdown, their body and mind start to kind of just uh, crumble a little bit so that they become unable to use the functions which they don't normally do in, in everyday life. Like, uh, you know, they'll, they'll start to shake and they'll breathe uncontrollably and they might hit themselves in the head and they might cry and they might just be on the floor and unable to think, uh, you know, clearly and stuff. And this is not, not good. This is something we try to avoid with autism spectrum disorders completely. So I'm gonna give you five tips that I uh, would like you guys to um, try and follow and use them to your advantage. Oh yeah, I'm inside my son's uh, canvas uh, wigwam. It's kind of cool, check it out. So, I just thought it'd be a cool place to start this video. <laughs> okay, well, uh, okay, that didn't actually work as well as I hoped it was gonna work. But anyway, let's get on with these five tips. Okay, so I have had my fair share of autism meltdowns. And what usually happens, and let's put a scenario where I'm sitting in here in the living room and uh, my son's having dinner and he decides that he wants to throw his dinner everywhere. And then my partner's kind of like maybe washing the dishes or she's like making a cake and I'm like, oh my God, I start freaking out. Cause then I've got like food all over me and then I start getting hot and then he starts crying and my girlfriend starts panicking and then I start panicking and then, oh my goodness, this, 
meltdown is about to happen. And then the meltdown goes on, right? And it happens. So one of the things that I've learned to instantly help me, and this is tip number one, is instantly remove yourself. Like, on what I mean by that is simply this. When that happens and I start feeling like, ah, I'm about to kind of like explode or melt down, I kind of leave the room and I go upstairs to our bedroom and I sit on the bed in complete silence. And yes, I still have the meltdown, but not not every um, thing about it is overwhelming, as in like, I still have the meltdown, but it's easier to overcome. Like if I was in that situation that I was melting down, that situation whilst melting down would actually make the situation worse. Like anything, you know, you think about it, like if you're, if you're in sinking sand, and then you start like wrestling around and you're still in the sand, you're gonna sink deeper and it's gonna get worse. But if somebody pulls you out of that, you know, you can like shuffle around and it's not gonna get any worse. You're still gonna be, yes, covered in sand, but you're not gonna get any more stuck in that situation. Okay, that's a bad, bad uh, representation of what I'm trying to say. But you get the idea. Instant removal equals instant therapeutic time. And I know you might be saying like, well, damn, you know, just taking yourself outside of a situation isn't very therapeutic, but it is because you're treating your body and mind with the respect that it needs and the instant difference that it needs. Because by staying in, in a situation where you've got like sensory stimuli, overloading, overloading stuff, it's gonna make you way more like agitated. You're gonna need to try and you know, overcome those issues and you're not gonna in an environment like that. So you need to get yourself to a clean and calm environment. Now, it is possible that, you know, you are gonna be somewhere where you won't be able to get that kind of environment. But I, I highly ad advise that you try to. Like if you were in a restaurant, for instance, and you started freaking out and you feel like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have a meltdown, then I would go to the toilet in, in the, the restaurant or, you know, they use the, the restrooms or go to like the lobby of the restaurant or somewhere that's quieter just to catch yourself for just a moment. Because all you need is that bit to catch yourself to get yourself grounded, back to square one, and start again. Because we're all adults, and we try to kind of like do the best we can, and we have loads of things to do, so we really need to get ourselves kind of like overcoming very, very quickly. But this also works for children. I'm not saying this is video just for adults, I'm saying that this would work for uh, people who have children on the spectrum who are also having meltdowns, and you wanna help them kind of overcome those issues. Again, get them to a place which is quiet and calm. Okay guys, so. No idea why I'm drumming on this uh, this pillow right now. It's funny. My view right now is actually very very funny because I'm looking at my son's toy cars. Check it out. Look, he has like a toy car set up just here. So you guys are in the privileged uh, uh, living room right now. And I used to film all my videos on here, but I've started to not. I don't know why. I just pff, varied. Okay. So my next tip is very very simple. When you're dealing with autism meltdowns, they happen because of certain reasons, but things can make them worse. Kind of like that game, Buckaroo. You know, where you like pile loads of stuff onto like a horse and then like, or, or a camel or a donkey? Anyway, you, you pile all these things onto this four-legged creature and it's like bags and stuff and at the end it just kicks and it all goes everywhere. It's called Buckaroo. Now, the idea is, and what I'm trying to say is that like the more things you have on, the worse you're gonna feel and you know, you're gonna be closer to that tipping point of an autism meltdown. Now, one of the ways to reduce this, and this is like mental blockage, this is like, like you know, mental health state blockage and, and kind of like freeing up some of that space in your mind, is to exercise. Now, I don't mean go and run a marathon or do like an Olympic sport. What I mean is just go out for a walk, maybe take the dog for a walk, maybe do some swimming, maybe play a sport if you're interested in playing sports, you know, it could be football or badminton or whatever, like racquetball, anything you think of. What I'm trying to say is just to go out, get some air, get some oxygen moving around that body. And this always reduces stress and anxiety, which means you're, you're less closer to having an autism uh, meltdown because you're less closer to that tipping point is what I'm trying to say. Yes, I know that autism meltdowns are involuntary and they're gonna happen regardless, but if you can try and reduce your overstimulation because you might be feeling agitated about something that's going on in the background, and then you go to another situation and that starts annoying you, and then there you go, you know, you've got your concoction to create an autism explosive meltdown. But if, you've, if you're not feeling agitated because you went out and exercised and that kind of went away, then you've just got a situation that you can deal with at that moment in time which is very, very handy. I actually do exercise a lot. I do a lot of running and uh, I do some weights. I used to do a lot more weights, but I don't do them as much now. But, and I, and I I, I do it because I know how important working out is for people and I know how important like exercises in general just to keep you kind of like your, your mental state and your mental capacity moving forward in a very good and awesome fashion. So that was tip number two. Get some exercise, regardless how you do it, just make sure you get out there, get some air, it'll be awesome. 
the heck am I sitting on? <laughs> okay, so um, my next uh, advice for you guys to help with autism meltdowns and Asperger meltdowns is very simply this, try to get enough sleep. Like we all have issues with sleep. I am no stranger to issues with sleep. In fact, I've done a bunch of videos and I actually have a playlist all about autism and sleep. And uh, I'll try and leave that linked somewhere above here for you guys so you can go check out all the videos I've done on how to help, you know, sleeping for autism. But my advice is so simple. Find something that works if it's drinking tea, taking, you know, supplements, if it's exercising, if it's using a weighted blanket, if it's listening to music, whatever it is. Do your best to get enough sleep because when you sleep again, you take a huge chunk of stress and anxiety out of the equation, which keeps you lower than you expected to have an autism meltdown. For instance, when I don't get enough sleep, I know that I'm like agitated and I'm groggy and I'm kind of like, ah, you know, I'm about to explode anytime. But when I get loads and loads of sleep, I'm able to be a little bit more calm and I know that like if something ticks me off, then it's not gonna tick me over the edge because I'm well rested. Your mind needs rest, your body needs rest. And when you rest both of these, you come a little bit more content in the surroundings that you're placed in. This is why I feel like a lot of autistic people are very agitated because we do have issues with sleeping. So Asperger's meltdowns can happen because of a lack of sleep, but not exclusively because of a lack of sleep. It's just that lack of sleep doesn't help when you're trying to reduce those things happening. So just like think about it, when was the last time, and logically, when was the last time you had hardly any sleep and you felt awesome? Like never, okay? You know, you do need sleep. Like have you ever done that thing where you stay up all night and you might sleep for one hour and then you feel like total rubbish? That feeling is <laughs> not a good feeling and that's not gonna make anybody feeling any more secure in their surroundings or secure in a situation that might be heightened or stressful. So it's important that we get enough sleep. I'm actually in my room right now and it's so important that you make your bedroom a calming area as well. Because overstimulation through like pictures on the walls and like loads of things going on and lights everywhere and stuff can keep you awake at night. That's why a bedroom is very, very calming. As you can see, it's super monotonal, it's super calming, and it's just dead relaxing. That's not to mean that like you can't have things in your room. I'm saying that like just think about it, you know. You want to have things a bit more calm, a bit more sleep to reduce that stress. All right, let's get on to the next tip. Guys, if you think that this video can help somebody, please, please share it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and anywhere you feel it could help somebody. And also tag me in it because I love to communicate with you guys on other social media platforms. So yeah, please share this video because it can help somebody else and let me know and I'll talk to you there. Okay, so this tip for Asperger's meltdowns is an amazing one that helps you recover quickly after actually having a meltdown. So we've been through stuff of how to help prevent meltdowns, what to do during meltdown, but what do you do after you have a meltdown? Like, how do you recover from such an event? Because it's not gonna be good. You know, you gotta think about it. A, a, a big, big ordeal, a meltdown like that can leave someone feeling exhausted, sleepy, thirsty, hungry. Am I just like counting dwarfs here? But you know, the idea is that like they, they will feel somewhat of a compromised situation after having some kind of autism meltdown and, and that's not good. So this is tip number four. This tip is simply this, after having an autism meltdown, as soon as you catch yourself, as soon as you kind of like, okay, come around a little bit, do the thing that you love doing the most. If it's playing like Minecraft, PUBG, kind of World of Warcraft, whatever it is that you wanna play, go and do that game, or like watch a documentary, or go to your favorite restaurant, or like make your favorite meal, eat your favorite snack. Do those things, because what'll happen is that your body will start kind of like feeling itself again, to start feeling its normalization because it's kind of like involuntary negative experience can only be uh, offset by voluntary positive experience. So when you have a, an involuntary negative experience like an autism meltdown, then put in a positive one that you can control. It's all about making you better, making you feel more comfortable and coming around to the realization that like, you know, you can deal with this because you can deal with this. I know that you can deal with this. I have confidence in you. Okay? Okay, it's not the end of the world. It may feel like it at the time and it may definitely stress you out and cause all kinds of horrible stuff, but it's okay. Cause I got you back. Dan's here for you. And if you're enjoying this video guys, please give it a huge thumbs up. I really want to hit like 400 likes on this video. Or hey, actually, if we can get like 450 likes on this video, um, it would just be amazing. It would be the most amazing thing ever. So thank you so much. And it would just be amazing if you could just give this video a thumbs up. So 
That being said, doing a favorite thing, like one of the things I love to do is I love to research like aliens and stuff. So if I've had like a meltdown, what I do is I like go and like research aliens and stuff straight after because I don't want to think about the meltdown. I want to think about something fun and something that I'm interested in. I mean, it's just like, it's like having like, it's like having something smelling really bad, like a garbage can, like a rubbish, you know, garbage van in your living room and then pushing that out and bringing in something that smells super nice like air freshener or something awesome like a bowl of fruit like that's the difference that's what you're doing you're pushing out the, uh, the rubbish and pulling in something awesome so remember to do that i know i keep disappearing and then reappearing in different places in my house it's because like i'm just i'm just cool like that i just want to make you guys happy you know seeing like different places in my house how cool is this this is the other side of our room this is like a curved wall here it's weird we actually live in like a an unusual house it's kind of triangular shape but the upstairs our bedroom is like this circular thing where it has a balcony outside. It's super cool. Anyway, on to tip number five. This is tip number five. Okay. <laughs> tip number five is very, very uh, simple as well. But a lot of people don't do it. <laughs> tip number five is called breathing. Okay, and you're thinking, Dan, you know, you've covered breathing loads of times. But yeah, but everybody forgets breathing. If you feel like you're having an autism meltdown or about to have an, a meltdown, and if it's after a meltdown, this will always work. Breathing. Now, breathing comes from different techniques. We breathe subconsciously anyway because it's the you know the main way that we get oxygen into our body to stay alive, and we all need it, it's like aerobic respiration. But in terms of uh, how it can help heighten your mood and make you feel more comfortable and less kind of triggered, is very very simple. See, the yoga teachers, the yogis, and the Buddhists always do this kind of breathing technique where you breathe in and count to five. So you breathe in like one, two, three, four, five. Hold your breath for five and then breathe out for five, and they do that five times. And what this does is it pushes oxygen around your body and instantly calms your brain, calms your mind. This is an amazing technique. I challenge you, pause this video right now and do it right now, and I bet you'll feel calm. Okay, welcome back to the video. I bet you feel calm. If anyone's just done this and you feel calm, write down below, say, Dan, I feel super calm. That was a great tip, that was awesome. Because I wanna know, I wanna know how it worked. If it didn't, let me know as well because I'm interested to know why it didn't. But breathing is fantastic. It's one of the one of the main ways you can calm yourself down. It's one of the main ways that you can feel more like you straight after having something crazy happen, like a horrible negative event or something where you are feeling uh, down or, or, or anxious or having an autism meltdown. Honestly, this is an amazing tip, but I do want to pass that one on to you. But that's not it, guys. We're not stopping there. I have a bonus tip for you, and it's very, very simple. Okay, this is a weird angle, but we're gonna go for it anyway. So, my tip, sort of like cushions and stuff. Okay, my last tip for you guys for helping with Asperger meltdowns and Asperger's meltdowns and autism meltdowns and everything else in between is simply eat good foods. Now, if you're eating like rubbish, like if you're eating like hamburgers and candy and snacks and stuff like that, your brain isn't going to have a rest. It's gonna just be like motivated on like junk foods and they have like high calorific sugar intake and then it drops to like dramatic lows. And that's not good because that actually can cause a lot of things like stress and low moods and even depression in some cases. But if you're eating good things like strawberries and pineapples and bananas and blueberries and stuff like that, your body will peak and it will stay at a peak because these are like happy foods. So if I was you, I would just Google happy foods. See what foods can make people happy and try and implement some of those into your diet because by doing that, you're gonna eventually feel way better. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you'd like to see another video, just click over here and you see another video, click over here and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see more videos from me. And I'll see you next time, guys. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,